Hey guys, Kevin gives me another movie review for guys, and uh, this movie I'm reviewing, if you guys remember a while back, I reacted to the trailer for this movie. It was only a couple weeks ago that I reacted to it, and I didn't know what it was going to be, but then I realized it already came out, I'm like, okay, I gotta see this thing, it's going to be a really great movie, and now I've watched it, and that movie is Experimenter. I was really looking forward to this movie, the trailer made this movie look really interesting, and I went into it still really not knowing a lot. I kind of forgot what the movie was about, and uh, I'd say that after watching it, Experimenter is one of the biggest, probably the biggest, one of the biggest surprises of this year by far, definitely, um, because I loved Experimenter for the most part. It's one of the best movies of the year. I really loved it, and it's very different than, I think, any biopic I've seen in a while. Now, the plot to this movie is simply one of the most interesting plots I've heard all year, and I think one of the most compelling, because the plot itself it's just really interesting. It focuses on this thing called the Milgram experiment, and what it is is you would basically. It is. Uh, it was at this college. Um, you know, this college professor who's also a psychologist, Stanley Milgram. He conducted this experiment in which people think that basically they're there to do some sort of test or whatever, but then they sit in this chair and this. Um, you know, they sit in this chair, ask questions to who they think is a man who is getting electrically shot when he's really not, and for whatever reason, despite the fact that, you know, they are concerned about this man, because of them being told not to leave, they don't leave, and most make it all the way through the quiz. And basically, the movie is all about documenting the life of Stanley Milgram, the reaction that people had to him, and showing how people reacted to this experiment in general. That basically is the plot of the movie, and... I think the plot is very, very compelling and something I definitely really do love. This movie is not a much more of a study of human intelligence than is a character study. The movie is a lot about Stanley Milgram, but it's a lot more about a character study, which means the acting is not a huge part of this movie. It is, but it's not. However, without go without, you know, without a doubt, Peter Sarsgaard as Stanley Milgram gives one of the best performances I've seen all year. His performance in this movie is so engaging. He is so great in this role. Because Stanley Milgram, you really try to figure out why the hell he would come up with this. Well, his father, um, you know, was in concentration camps, and uh, I, so one of the, not Adolf Hitler, but one of the other Hitlers, I can't remember his name right now, but he, of course, did this sort of method, and basically he wants to test it out, and you really see that in him. But he had such incredible range in this movie. You don't really know. What, what I love about his character is that he knows the entire time what he's doing, um, you know, isn't real. And that there really is no man. But he never tells a single one of his, you know, a single one of the people that go in there to work on this machine. That's just really interesting overall. The fact that he never tells them. You think that he would, but he never tells them a thing. He just, they go into the machine thinking that there's a man strapped to a chair, and it really questions their intelligence. You know, he really is perplexed as to why they wouldn't just leave, and it's really interesting, definitely. And the second half of this movie really becomes more of, is this man crazy or not? Because you want to know, is he sane? What kind of, you know, who would have come up with something like this? It's a crazy experiment, but there's so many other things that Peter Sarsgaard did. Not only to keep the movie engaging, he actually narrates throughout the film. There are so many points in the movie where he breaks the fourth wall, and rather than narration, he talks directly to the camera, kind of as if he's asking us what we would do, and kind of getting us involved in the situation, and showing us how, you know, important of a subject this is. It really is a compelling thing, and they really handle it very well, and he definitely, his performance in this movie is nothing short of Oscar worthy. He was incredible. He really did a great job. Winona Ryder. It has been forever since we've seen Winona Ryder in a movie. The last movie I can think of that I saw Winona Ryder in, to be honest with you guys, is either Beetlejuice or Edward Scissorhands. I can't really think of another movie I've seen her in. I'm, I'm sure she's done other movies, but it's the first time I've seen her in a long time, and she really did a great job in this movie as Stanley's wife, Sasha. She stays committed to him no matter what, and she's even interested in the machine. She wants to try it out, and even though she has this secret, she keeps it because she thinks her husband's doing the right thing, and I really liked her character. Their bonding was very good. The movie's really not about them, but I think she definitely did a very good job in the movie. And everyone else is really, really great. There are some really good cameos in there. A lot of people coming into the room, testing out on the machine, things like that. That's very good. 
whoever played the guy that constructed the um, experiment, you know, the guy that would go into that room when they would ask, um, you know, should I quit? Should I leave? Whoever that guy was, he was amazing. I mean, the um, the deadpan, just the lack of emotion he had in this role, seeming like he didn't give a damn what happened to this man is incredible. And it's probably terrifying. I mean, I can just picture myself going in this room with this man. It has to be a terrifying experience. And he really did a great job. Definitely one of the best casts of the year. Everyone really did a great job in this movie, I have to say. Um, also, the transformation given to uh, Stanley Milgram is also very good. I'll talk about that. But the directing here by Michael Almereda is really, really good. Like I said, this isn't a typical biopic. It's much more of a study of human intelligence and human sanity and why we as humans would do this why would we put ourselves through this why would we put this man through this i mean obviously if we're worried about this man why would we leave him in that electric chair why wouldn't we leave him it's, it's very interesting it's a very interesting subject that comes up in this movie and i really think he directed it the best way he could it's a very scientifically accurate movie like there's a lot of science in this movie but I found it all extremely interesting, and the directing was really great because of that I definitely really loved, I have to say. And the movie isn't necessarily dark. It's more of just showing you the facts and kind of just, you know, kind of showing us how we feel about it. The movie doesn't tell you if this is right or wrong. The movie really is what is your opinion of this, and I definitely found that very interesting. And by far, surprise, you know, um, no surprise here in the screenplay, the most, you know, the best scenes in the movie are the scenes in that room because you don't know what they're going to do. You don't know if they're going to leave. You don't know if they're going to say. There are some times where they want to leave, but they don't leave because they're told not to. It's just really interesting. And the fact that he never told them what was going on, and yes, I get his point that, you know, it probably wouldn't have been the best thing to do to tell them what's going on because they probably think he was a crazy person but that's kind of the point he was a bit crazy and I do think what he did was a bit insane but I think they definitely showed that very very well and I really enjoyed that I just found it all very very interesting you know these people in the room a large portion of the first half of the movie are just random people in the room asking this machine you know going through questions with this machine and by the way guys I forgot to say the machine's always wrong like the man is always wrong it's that way they always have to zap him which I think is definitely very interesting and and they try to rig it they try to make sure that the man gets it right and it's there's this really great scene in the movie where you see all the people that worked on this machine and try to figure out you know try to explain the various ways that they tried to not shock this man it's just it's really compelling overall um but like I said, largely the first half is them in this room. The second half of the movie I didn't find nearly as interesting, but I still really did enjoy it. It's more of um, going into how this affected Stanley Milgram for the rest of his life. It's kind of like that. What he had to deal with, um, the interviews he had to deal with, the inter you know, the people he talked to, um, the way it's affected his family life. I found that all very interesting, but I did find the first half definitely a lot more interesting. But I did really love the uh, way they presented the narrative in this movie. This isn't a movie where they basically, you know, go one year later. It's He's talking to us the whole time. It's really interesting the way they did it. almost felt like a documentary with actors in it, and they did a very good job with that. Obviously, Stanley Milgram, you know, Peter Sarsgaard is playing Stanley Milgram. He stays in character the whole time, but it really much felt like he was talking to us and... Giving, we were giving him an interview, and I definitely really love the way they did that. And the narration is something that is just very compelling. It, and by the way, guys, it very much is like House of Cards. If you guys have seen House of Cards, you know how he'll just randomly start talking to us. That's how it is in this movie. You just have to go with it. And it works very, very well, surprisingly. I, the first time it happened, I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work here, but it worked perfectly. I really thought they held the narration very well, and I was definitely very impressed by it, which is something I did not know going into this movie. Even though the trailer showed it, I completely forgot about it, and I liked that because I thought the writing was great here. The cinematography was fantastic. You really felt like you were in the time period of the 60s, and you could also see why this was such um, a big deal, and you know, what this machine could do and things like that. And also, this is a movie where you really do feel claustrophobic at times. Like, when you are in this room, you are terrified. These scenes are pretty terrifying, and they handle them very, very well. They're very dark. They're very much like, why they don't you get the hell out of that room? Like, I keep, you know, when, when the people would come in, I kept wondering, is there going to be someone that leaves? 
No one ever leaves. There's even a scene where a man wants to leave. He doesn't leave because he's told not to. And it's just really interesting. And you really question why, you know, they don't leave. And these things still happen today because, you know, they point on the movie that this, you know, these machines are still around. But back to the cinematography, the makeup looked really good as well. Stanley's transformation with the beard, when he eventually got that beard, looked really good. He definitely did a very good job with that because I looked up Stanley Milgram. It looked very close to what he actually looked like. I also thought the, um, the costumes were really good. It looked like the 60s, things like that. They did a very good job with the cinematography overall, and I definitely really enjoyed that. The score was very interesting. The score was very mysterious and very quirky, not really quirky, but sneakish, just like the movie is, because the movie itself is very sneaky. It's a very sneaky, and I'd even say downright maniacal movie. I mean, you really don't know where it's going to go, and you don't really know how they're going to handle this subject. I mean, there are certain things that I thought was going to happen in this movie that didn't happen, and I definitely was very impressed by that. I really love the way they handled that in this movie. People's reaction to Stanley Milgram, you know, performing all of these um, experiments. It's very interesting. Some of them are for it, some of them are against it, and his reasoning is all very, very interesting, and something I really love seeing was his reasoning, you know, why he did this, because, again, why would someone want to put someone through this? Why would someone want to do, you know, allegedly um, intentionally do this to someone, put them through that emotional trauma, it's all really interesting to see why he would want to do that. I found the length of this movie perfect, by the way, 97 minutes, that's the exact length it needed to be. It didn't need to be any longer or any shorter, it was exactly the perfect length. I didn't think it needed to be any shorter than it was, but like I said, guys, my only complaint of the movie is the second half I did not find nearly as interesting. I still really was into it, but I just found the first half of this movie to be much more compelling. It was a lot more of getting into our heads, and the second half is definitely more fact-based, like, here's what happened. They turned his book into a movie, and kind of how he wasn't happy with some of the ways the movie was done. They do make it so it is all in Stanley's perspective. Like, everything that happens is from Stanley's perspective, and I definitely really like that. And most of the movie is mainly Stanley and how people react, and that's mainly the second half of the movie. But the first half is really great. I still really did love the second half. I just didn't like it as much as the first half. But it still is a great movie, and one of the best movies here by far. Very, very solid. And overall, guys, I definitely really loved Experimenter. I would highly recommend it to you guys if you haven't checked it out. It's not a movie you can really say a lot about, just because, like I said, it's more of a fact based, um, how do you feel about this subject kind of movie. It definitely is one of those, um, but that's why I think it's really great, and that's why I'm gonna give Experimenter a 4.5 to 5, or an A. It is simply one of the best movies of the year. It will for sure either be, either be on my honorable mentions or my top 10 list. I'm actually probably gonna make a top 20 list, to be honest with you guys. I'm probably gonna do that, because now I'm seeing some really great movies. Between this, Beast and O Nation, um, a documentary I just saw called Amy, there's some really great movies coming out, and, uh, this is definitely one of them. Definitely check it out. You can watch it on any VOD platform that there is. Um, luckily, you can rent it. You can watch it on Solar Movie like I did. I definitely would recommend it. It's an amazing film, and you won't be disappointed whatsoever. It's also a very interesting subject because, again, it still does happen today, and you have to wonder, how has someone not figured this out? You know, someone's going to watch this movie... They better not do this, because someone's gonna watch this movie, they're gonna know what's going on. Like, if I ever went to one of these things, I'm probably gonna know what's going on. So, they, there is a problem with them making this movie. The fact they probably can never do this anymore. But they're still performed today, and it's just very interesting to figure out why they did that. But overall, guys, this is my review of Experimenter. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys saw this movie, you have seen it. I would love to hear your thoughts on this movie. I know a lot of people aren't gonna see this movie, but I really do feel this movie should get a lot of Oscar nods, especially for Best Screenplay, one of the best screenplays of the year, as well as um, Peter Sarsgaard for Best Actor. Definitely, he definitely deserves it. And Winona Ryder for um, Supporting Actress. I thought she also did a very good job with that. Um, you know, she also did a very good job. And that's basically my review. Hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see you guys in the next video, which will be for tonight's episode of Doctor Who. And I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.